What's going on, people? It's Hajimoto. And guess what we have here? We got the Umarex Gauntlet 2 in 22 caliber. Totally redesigned stock. Amazing power. Same weight, but distributed in a way where it made a difference. You may notice just looking at it, there's some things that stand out as being big time different. This stock shape, totally different. More of a precision style stock. And this gigantic bottle on the front. Now, I want to start out by just saying, we're going to go over all of the features of this rifle out of the box. Nothing changing, nothing being done to it, no modifications, just straight out of the box performance. We're going to take it to the range, we're going to shoot it, we're going to pull the trigger. And I'm just going to cover some basics right now in talking about this air rifle compared to the previous version. And what has changed. The weight between the two rifles, as I said, is exactly the same. Those, you might remember, there was a wheel back here on the old version. That thing was so heavy, it added probably a pound of weight to the rifle. That's gone. That weight has been replaced by this enormous bottle in the front. This is a 24 cubic inch bottle. Now, that's not that bad. When you start thinking about a bottle like this, this is what almost every gauntlet owner used to upgrade to. This is the 22 cubic inch bottle. But see, this bottle is a 3000 PSI bottle. So in order to get more shots, what we were doing was upgrading folks to this carbon fiber bottle, 4,500 PSI. This gave a lot more shots because you could put more pressure in there, means more volume, more shots. This 24 cubic inch bottle, it's aluminum, but it's not a 3000 PSI bottle, guys. This is these two combined. The bottle on here is a 4,500 PSI 24 cubic inch bottle. That's correct. 4,500 PSI. The rifle has 1,900 PSI going to it. If you remember, that's what used to be the starting point for the 25 cal. Now, no, I, I notice I said this is the 22, but it's got the power of a 25 caliber in it. Now, they say that out of the box, this gun is supposed to shoot 11.9 grain uh, pellets, lead pellets, at 1,075 feet per second. Well... I had a little bit of a different experience with this rifle. Those of us that shot the Umarex Gauntlet in 22 caliber always wanted to get the 18.13 grain pellets to fly at a range of somewhere around 920 feet per second. And that was with a lot of work. Increasing transfer ports, power, the whole nine yards pressure, just to get there. This rifle, out of the box, stock, ran 18.13 grain pellets at an average of 1,006 feet per second. That is over 40 foot-pounds of energy, pure stock. Stock. So let's start talking about some of the features on this thing. Just think about that for a bit, because I'm also going to blow you away when I talk about the JSB Monster redesigns. Those are 25.39 grain pellets, this rifle, stock, shot those at 901 feet per second. 45 foot-pounds out of a 22 caliber stock. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what she's got. You may notice that the top rail here is a bit different. It used to be just a dovetail. Now it is a Picatinny dovetail combo with two sections on the rail. The barrel length is exactly the same as it was previous. The shroud is the same as it was previous. The baffle system in the front, they used to have a single cigar style baffle. Now there's four individual baffles in there that do a much better job of keeping the noise down. The trigger on the Gauntlet 2 is exactly the same as the previous. Just as adjustable, single stage trigger. The four stock here, when you look at the overall look of this air rifle, you notice it kind of resembles its big brother the Umarex hammer. This forward section is a direct transfer 
of that Umarex hammer. The way that it supports the barrel, keeping that shroud from moving out of the way, and also the integrated M slots that are through the bottom and on the sides mean if you want to put a bipod on here, a flashlight, a camera, there's no drilling or aftermarket modifications needed right from stock. You can grab something like this piece of rail, put it right on the bottom. Now you've got provisions to get your bipod installed right on the bottom of it and you're good to go. The magazines from the previous gauntlet fit this, no problem. The cheek piece is adjustable, goes up and down just like the previous, but without the turning of a wheel. You loosen the two fasteners, you can raise it, tighten it, you're done. You really wouldn't be moving the thing around all the time anyway. The other one was kind of cool because you could spin it, but you're really not moving it that much. When we talk about the differences between the two ver the versions of the previous version and this one, as you can see, it stands out like crazy, is this giant, oversized, knurled cocking bolt. The cocking pressure of this version has been reduced by 15% over the previous version. The stock we just talked about has been changed. The baffle system has changed. This will produce 120 shots per fill, as were the 22 version of the gauntlet would get about 60 shots per fill. So that's the run of the tape. The same tool is used for degassing this as the previous version. Everything is the same but different and much more power. Guys, I took this thing apart down to its most bare parts and I'm very, very versed on exactly what was been done to this to make it do what it can do. But more importantly, let's show you. I'm gonna take this thing to the range and we're gonna shoot pellets only out of this because that's really what this rifle is designed for, pellets. And when you can fly a 25.39 grain pellet at almost a thousand feet per second, there's no reason to do anything else. So let's go ahead and show you what it does on the range and see what you think. Hey guys, this is Hajimoto, and uh, we're going to be taking that Gauntlet 2 and showing what she can do downrange. And for some reason, some ridiculous winds have come in today while it's sunny. The winds are insane. I'm going to show you some of these trees behind me just to give you some idea of what these winds are doing. And there's some that are downrange, just to show you what I'll be shooting across. The winds are incredible. But then again, the RMAC doesn't give you the ability to redo the shots either. This is training. Hang in there, guys. Okay guys, first up we're going to shoot the 18.13 grains in this crazy wind, which I call RMAC training. So it'll be the JSB Jumbo Heavies, 50 yards, 2 inch target. Nine hundred ninety. Nine hundred ninety three. Nine 
993. There you go, guys. Five shots, 50 yards, 18.13. I'm going to leave the first two, three shots in there that were way off to the right on purpose just to show you that the wind was pushing and I'm trying to hold for the wind. But that group, you saw the five shots. Okay, guys, next up is going to be the JSB Jumbo Monsters, 25.39. These are the redesigned, 50 yards on a two-inch target. That's our five shots, guys. And again, the wind is pushing those left to right. But it is what it is. Okay, guys, we're going to stretch the legs out a little bit on those 25.39s. These uh, jumbo monsters have serious uh, wind bucking ability. And uh, we're going to stretch it out to 100. Let's see what we get. One more for good measure. Eight hundred. Guys, that's a hundred yards. That's a hundred yards with twenty five three nines, and our average was eight hundred ninety one. Guys, that's what you used to get with the 15 eight nines in the gauntlet, the original gauntlet. That group is insane. Insane. I'm going to show you a, a picture, a photograph of that group. Wow. Holy cow, man. Okay, guys, stretch the legs out a little bit to 100 yards using the Jumbo Monsters. 25.39, the redesigns. They did very well at 50. We'll see how they do at 100. Eight 
893. Eight hundred ninety one, eight hundred eighty one, eight hundred eighty four. 891 891 888 Eight hundred eighty eight, eight hundred ninety five. Okay, guys, I took a lot more shots on that so that I could eliminate any flyers. And the predominance of that group, you can see where it landed, and that's a hundred yards. I'm impressed at 100 yards using a pellet, 2539. That's incredible. That's a lot of energy downrange. sound meter is three feet in front of and three feet to the right of the barrel at the same elevation. What's going on people? It's Hajimoto and uh, today if you notice there's a totally different wind situation going on here. So we're going to try to give that gauntlet 2 a chance to redeem itself and not be totally reliant on my ability to shoot in the wind. So as you look, we've got a far more calm, peaceful day. So this will be a better representation of what the, uh, what the rifle can do. I'm going to only go out to the 100 uh, because those 2539s really impressed me. So we're going to go with those, those redesigns right out of the gate, the monsters. I've also noticed I started to feel a little puff of air every time I pulled the trigger. So I got a feeling those uh, pellet probe O-rings needed to be replaced. So we may see an elevation in the travel speed as well. So we'll see. We'll see how she works out. And again, 100 yards only, and I'm going to shoot the JSB Monster Redesigns 2539s. Here we go. Okay, guys, we're going to, day two, give this old boy a chance at 100 yards shooting the Jumbo Monster redesigns, 2539s. And I want to make sure that it's absolutely clear. Uh, the only thing that I've done to this rifle was uh, changed a scalped O-ring on the barrel, so it was lead, had a little blow-by on it. And I changed the pellet probe O-rings just to make sure that I had a good seal because I was feeling a little puff of air. No other modifications have been done to this gauntlet, too. And I'm going to be honest with you, through the entire time I've had this for review and testing, I continually keep looking at the numbers and thinking this is a 25 caliber. 
There may be an instance in this review where I refer to this as a 25 caliber because it's generating the exact same numbers, if not greater, than the previous 25 cal gauntlet. So now that I got that out of the way, let me shut the yap and get to flapping. Nine hundred five. Nine hundred. Eight hundred ninety eight. Nine hundred seven. That was five shots, right guys? Yep, that was five shots. So, take a look at that group, guys. I watched that happen in the optic as I was shooting it. I am absolutely blown away, and I don't really even see the need to try to find another projectile. I really don't. That is scary. Nice job, Umarex. <laughs> Okay guys, this is the round two of day two, gauntlet two, using the 25 39s. We're going to move over to the right one target and do the same thing. Five shots on the target, 100 yards, and let's see if I can keep it consistent. Now that last group was slightly low and to the left. Rather than make a turret adjustment, I'm simply going to hold over to the top right of the circle and I should place them in the center. Nine hundred twelve. Nine hundred five. Eight hundred ninety eight. I'm afraid to say something right now. Nine hundred seven. You gotta be fishing me. Last one. Nine hundred five. Wow. <laughs> goodness oh my goodness <laughs> this better have been recording that's all I got to say well guys it's time for my final thoughts there's been a lot of improvements from the gauntlet to the gauntlet 2 this precision stock the lighter rear of the stock doesn't have that heavy piece of metal back here anymore 
the stock is a little narrower in the hand it feels comfortable the cocking handle and effort being reduced the ability to use my magazines from my previous gauntlet 22 in here that's awesome they also give two magazines with this gauntlet 2 than the previous which was only one and the previous gauntlet the power generation of 1900 psi operating pressure on a 22 caliber is the reason why this thing could generate the 45 foot pounds with those 25 39s and all but stack them at 70 yards incredible accuracy with an amazing thump the 4500 psi non-carbon fiber bottle has still got me shaking my head and I'm absolutely blown away by that and the last two major improvements on this rifle that I think are worth mentioning well let me give, let me give one more and that's the baffle system they did a great job getting rid of that cigar style uh, baffle that didn't really do a good job and go with a multi-chambered stackable baffle uh, system which you main it looks familiar because the industry they've been using those for a while and they've got that in there very very good on that so now to those two things that I think really need to get a pat on the back for one and it's major going back to the ninja regulators on these way to go Umarex, that was the winning combination when the first Umarex gauntlet came out. That's the winning combination here. This regulator's standard deviation and the numbers that I put up, and I'll share them over here, are insane. And it's a serviceable part, which parts are readily available. Should one of these pieces fail, the valve seals, the O-rings fail, it's serviceable. Big deal. The other thing is kudos to you, Umarex. I've really given you guys a hard time over the years in the past on what could have been done and should have been done. And I'm going to tell you now, you've redeemed yourself because you covered a lot of ground here. There are so many improvements that have been made since from the gauntlet to the gauntlet two guys. It's insane. I know what they are, but I'm not going to reveal those to you till another video. Right now, this is out of the box performance that you can expect and get, which is what this is all about. If you guys have any questions and if I didn't cover something in detail and you need more info, please leave the comment down below and I will respond providing it's respectful. That's all I got for today. You guys take it easy and shoot safe.